How's Otacon going for you so far? It's pretty fantastic. Excellent. I, uh, I would, my very first convention that I ever did was this one as an attendee. Oh, wow. Back in, like, 2004. It was okay. my first time ever going to an anime con, and it, it kind of changed my life. And I, I had literally just done, like, two sessions in the booth. I had just started my, my career at that point. And uh, so I kind of, I, I, I made a little promise to myself that I would be a guest at this con at some point in my career. And it took me 14 years, but wow. I'm here. So it's been, uh, the whole thing's just been a dream come true. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I want to start off with uh, chatting uh, Attack on Titan mm-hmm. and My Hero Academia, okay. um, both of which I would qualify as sort of like anime for people who may not otherwise like anime. Yeah, right, um, absolutely. Gateway anime. Yeah, f- absolutely. Um, if you could just sort of discuss the response to these series so far mm-hmm. and uh, the continued success of both. Well, I mean, I think My Hero's success... Uh, especially because it's kind of the more recent one in that regard. Uh, bringing it over to the States was a brilliant move. Uh, Funimation took a very wild bet on whether or not it would be kind of the next big thing, and holy crap, it paid off. But at the same time, it's like no one, I think, is surprised that a, a superhero anime became big in the United sure, States right. of America. <laughs> so like, it's, it's, I mean... It, it, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that I think that, that it was going to be the, the next uh, very and they're a very successful franchise and it's one of those rare opportunities like for me it's the first uh, shonen show mm-hmm. in a long time that really grabbed my attention okay the one that really kind of pulled me in I couldn't really get into Naruto I couldn't get in like my my introduction to the shonen genre was Dragon Ball okay Same. so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I mean it was kind of the one of those that just kind of solidified my love of anime as a kid and and so um there was just something about to me at least at, at the time that I watched Naruto and Bleach and, and stuff like that, that that they didn't have there was just something about them that didn't didn't click with me sure my hero does in a major way and I feel like s- those characters are I think for me it was because those, in those other shows the, none of the characters were really relatable to me like I couldn't identify with any of them I identify with so many characters in my hero and I think that and, and, and especially Deku because I mean like of I think course, he's the yeah. most relatable right uh, and, 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 and much in the same way that Yuri Kotsky I think is is relatable for a lot of people in, in that he's he's the kid with big dreams and, and big hopes that that doesn't really have, you know, or doesn't think that he has what it takes, you know, and then he, you know, has his dreams kind of crushed for a bit, and then, but he sticks with it, and he works hard, and and he gets it, and like it's that just in Deku alone, you have an amazing story of uh, of character growth and of the the uh, literally the hero's journey, absolutely, and uh, and 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 that's just him. You have all these other characters that are. That, that have something to offer for everybody. And, and so everybody can find something in this show or someone to relate to. And all of their those personalities and everything are so large. For sure. It's like every single... Because that's the whole thing of being a superhero is having that huge, larger-than-life identity. So, like, they... And, and the fact that all of them have something unique yeah. and something like really in, very tangible for other people to grab onto and, and it, it is is just a sign of brilliant character design and writing. Absolutely. Uh, I, so yeah, I think it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, yeah it absolutely. Was be, it was going to, to be successful. Um, kind of the same with Attack on Titan and, and for me it's more about the mystery and I think that's what a lot of, for a lot of people as well. But and not to say that the characters aren't uh, that people can't identify with these characters far from it. Sure. I mean, like, the whole reason of, like I wanted to be Armin was because I, I, I have been in very much the same mindset and and emotional state that he's been at the start of the show. That feeling of like I, I'm I'm worthless to my friends and the family around me, or I'm no good, and 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 I'm just a burden and. Uh, there's nothing like redeeming about me, and I have to work even harder just to just to be worthy of their love and stuff like that. And then for him to realize, oh, I'm just my own worst enemy. No yep. one else thinks this about me. It's just me. Uh, that's that's a very human and very. I, I think I think most of us at some point in our life have felt that. Um, and uh, but it also is the, the mystery of the show, and and that alone is this way. If I can if I can sit in a room full of people and we all have completely different theories about yeah, what's absolutely. going on and all of them can be possible again a sign of great writing absolutely and, and, and yeah it's just 
I, I'm very blessed to be a part of both of them. Awesome. And I'm glad that uh, they continue to grow. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you mentioned Yuri Katsuki, Yuri mm-hmm. on Ice. Just a phenomenon. F- sort of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Uh, were you at all surprised by this sort of, like, universal... Very like, much so. response to this, and uh, are you excited for the upcoming movie? <laughs> a lot. For me, it was, I, I think a lot of us, just from the, the little preview clip that they showed, you know, uh, the, a lot of us had kind of this preconceived notion that it, while a beautiful piece of animation and and uh, a testament to the power of good rotoscoping and everything <laughs> else, too, was, um, it looked like at first it was going to be another free. Which I and, and while Free is a fun show, I, I don't like a lot of the queer baby stuff that mm-hmm. they have in that show. Um, but so I was very pleasantly surprised right. that Yuri was something that broke that mold, and the first time I've ever seen something break that mold before, and that that stereotype. Absolutely. Um, and uh, and 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 for it on top of it to uh, have that powerful representation and message. Without also without shoving it in anybody's face, right? And the rest, I mean, the story you were still the whole story was about the you know about the sport and about Yuri's pursuit of perfection in his art, uh, mm-hmm. and the battle that you know he faces every time he goes on the ice, you know, hence the name, and and it was it was just like you said, it came out of nowhere, yeah, just a beautiful piece of storytelling, and it was so refreshing to see Japanese companies take a, a risk like that again on something that was 100% unknown. Right. There was no manga that it was a, that a popular manga or something that it was already based on or right. a light novel series or or anything like there there was no dating sim game or anything, <laughs> yeah, right, you know or anything. It, it was it was 100% an original creation. And that's a risk. Yeah. That's a big risk and and that's that's something that they've had to be very careful about doing for the last decade. Uh so yeah, it was it was really cool that and, and the fact that I just that the role just kind of landed in my lap at the same time and then it just became this within just three weeks like the, by the third episode it had permeated the world uh, and and become this phenomenon that also crossed boundaries yeah. like fan boundaries you had ice skating fans for right, the first time right, just being right, like right. what's this anime stuff about like what what can it offer uh, and, and and vice versa so yeah it's it's. It's mind-boggling still to this day. Absolutely, just, just how powerful. I mean, and, and, and again, it's it's, and I, and I think in very much a similar way of, of my hero and, and Yuri and and and, uh, and Attack on Titan. It's just a sign of how powerful a simple bit of representation and good human characters can be. Yeah, absolutely. It just permeates the world. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, you mentioned you started in 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was very much into the scene at that point. And that cool. was sort of like it was, you know, my, my first Otakon was 2002. Nice. Um, but it, during that sort of like early mid aughts was such a boom in, in the industry. The golden and age. Very much yeah. so. Yeah, um, late 90s, so, early on. So if you could just sort of discuss what it's what it was like back then versus what it is now and sort mm-hmm. of you know, from your perspective as both a voice actor and an ADR guy, mm-hmm. um, just sort of like how the industry has evolved mm. over the last decade and a half. Well, everything is much faster <laughs> than when we started off. Uh, I mean, I even I even still have some old laser discs of uh, like Slayers. Oh, and, good. So, right, and, and, and the fact that you know those back in the day when you know if you were a laser disc collector, and that was one of the only ways in the states that you could get mm-hmm. anime. It was because like dubbing wasn't even a thing at that point. Um, was uh, the only way you could get it was three, two episodes per disc with no extras, subtitles only, and you had to wait six months to a year for the next two episodes, and you'd spend roughly one hundred and eight dollars per disc. So yeah, it's it's all free now. <laughs> uh, and I mean, back then, as a fan, as a collector myself, and as an you know just starting voice actor, like you said, we were kind of at the tail end of what we now refer to as the golden age of anime, uh, where back in the mid '90s, the the anime industry had almost crashed on itself, and then the the American industry was born. And they became the, the, the legs by which the body of the anime industry stood on for that entire 90s to early on period. Absolutely. And uh, that's when, that's what was the rise of ADV films and Funimation uh, and uh, for kids and stuff like that. And 
if you were a collector, if you were someone who like was was like really first now getting into it, like not in the mainstream like Pokemon or anything like that. Uh, you had a very few places physically that you could go. That was like Sam Goody, and Suncoast, Suncoast, and that was roughly it. Like those were the two big and like ones. weird import stores. Otherwise, yes. yeah, and comic book shops, yeah. and back rooms of yeah. comic book <laughs> shops. You know, and and, uh, and, and you, you had the choice between a sub or a dub VHS, and you know that spawned a whole war. Uh, and, uh, you know, and eventually, you know, in, you know, the aughts, we moved into DVDs. And so then, you know, that wasn't an issue anymore. You got both of them on one thing. And, and, and the, the, the prices were a little high at first because you were getting like only – at that point, they hadn't uh, mastered the art of, of – uh, compression right. on DVDs so like you can only get like four episodes at a time on a disc max plus you know if, if you were also going to put two languages on it plus extras and everything else um, so in, in, you, you were still spending a fairly good amount of money and as a young anime fan in high school I didn't have that <laughs> so it, uh, it was a challenge it, it was a really it was really tough to, to be a young anime fan at that point now and, and just to kind of tack onto that the uh it would take roughly a year from the time that a show came out in Japan, fully ran, you know, over a three-month season or longer, three to six months. Uh, it would take roughly a, three months after it finished for it to be bid on by the companies for it to then be, you know, won, have those contracts signed out and filled out, and then the Japanese sending the materials over on a boat. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, then, you know, going through them, authoring them, making sure that they're not corrupted in the first place, everything. And then the whole process of, of uh, transferring them to tape or then eventually digital material, uh, writing the scripts, casting people, recording it, and, and then authoring and everything. It took roughly a year from the time a show finished for it to be released in the States and available on DVD with sub and dub. It was, it was very hard. And in the mid-2000s, when the internet really kind of exploded in this country and we went from Napster and LimeWire to BitTorrent. Right. <laughs> uh, the whole thing changed. Right. Uh, the, the anime fans who had brought about the golden age of anime by supporting you know, DVD sales in the States and everything became the anime industry's worst enemy. They started downloading everything, and and it was then in this big mentality of, of download and piracy and stuff. This kind of fan entitlement that happened around the same time as well uh, was very damaging. And despite a lot of the companies trying to you know speak out against it and try to say, look, this is really hurting us. We're a small industry. We're not no we're nowhere near as big as like Hollywood and stuff, who can you know take some of these punches. But it was it was literally killing the industry, and then in like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, like like two thousand ten or something, we we lost Gonzo, mm -hmm. we lost some major animation companies over in Japan, we lost some major distributing and licensing companies over here in the states that that still you know haven't come back. We lost ADV Films, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was just. It was horrible, and, and 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 no one would listen. No one was willing to hear the message, and and and, and th at least those that were you know perpetuating this whole idea of like nah, just download everything, just steal is like we're not hurting anything, right? And then you know, and we we try to say it, and you know, and talk about it, and you know, and no one, very few were willing to actually listen. But the Japanese industry, uh, the Japanese side, you know, of the industry and those companies, uh, for the longest time, were afraid of the internet. And they weren't willing to move to an online platform because they were just afraid if they put more of their stuff mm. out there, it was just going to make it easier for it to be stolen. Um, so it, it took a little while, but finally we did move to it. You know, now we have Crunchyroll. Every major, every every major anime distribution company over here has a free web service mm -hmm. where you can watch the subtitles free the day they come out in Japan. Sometimes before right, the yeah. webbing and stuff. So it's like we we finally we beat the fan summers. It's right. like we we made it. We beat this. The you know no longer is it you know, really an issue, you know, for people to download. And now the only issue is people having trouble realizing what is an official website and what is, it is a, what is a of course, scam yeah. website. And, and, and that, that's the only issue now, but it's a far cry better than what it was in the mid two thousands. Absolutely. Uh, um, people are much more easily, it, it, you don't have to spend money to legally support the industry now. Just watch a couple of commercials on Hulu or, right, right, or right. something and you're doing, and you're, you're supporting. Um, and, and as also as a result of that, that move, 
we've seen Funimation, which is now kind of setting the new industry standard for dubbing, start doing simul dubs right. back in like 2013 with Space Dance. Yeah, it's within the last few years. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's become the new norm. Everything, like every every show that we do now at Funimation is, uh, I think that's like somewhere between 18 and 20 shows mm -hmm. every three months. We do simul dubs. That's incredible. So it's yeah. out with the, every episode is out within a, with either the day of the Japanese release, like we've been doing with My Hero, or uh, uh, within a week of it coming out. Awesome. So yeah, it's it's sped up a yeah. lot, yeah. and, and it, definitely to the benefit of those of us who love this industry and who love you know anime in general. Right. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's definitely killing some people that you know that work in the dubbing industry, but you know we it's a labor of love. Right. Uh, I guess my last question would be if you've got anything new coming up that you are legally allowed to talk about at this time. <laughs> uh, currently recording the Dragon Ball Super episodes. Uh, awesome. It's like we're just coming up to the Tournament of Power, uh, so that should be hitting Toonami, I believe, next week actually uh, from this from this recording. Um, also, starting the next season, season three of Attack on Titan. Also hitting Toonami next Saturday. So, sorry about that. No worries. So, uh, other than that, nothing else that I'm working on that I can talk about. Okay. But uh, <laughs> I am also starting to create my own original content. I've, I've started my own production studio. Excellent. And, uh, check out my Twitter for future news on that. Sounds good. Thank you so much Thank for the you. questions. Thank you. You're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.